Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Sabatine, a cardiologist and chair of the Thrombolysis and Myocardial Infarction, or TIMI, study group at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers to the most commonly asked questions on coronary artery disease. What is coronary artery disease? Coronary artery disease is the buildup of atherosclerotic plaque in the coronary arteries. What's the difference between coronary artery disease and coronary heart disease? They're essentially two different terms for the same thing. What is a coronary artery? Coronary artery is a blood vessel, and each person has three major ones that delivers blood and the oxygen and nutrients that it carries directly to the heart muscle. If we think about the coronary arteries as the pipes in your house, they bring oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle and can bring as much oxygen nutrients as the heart muscle needs to do whatever activity it needs to do. But what is plaque? Well, it's actually atherosclerotic plaque. And what is that? That's a buildup of cholesterol and other substances inside the wall of the vessel or of the coronary artery. As the plaque builds up, it causes progressive narrowing of the coronary arteries akin to the pipes in your house getting clogged up. What causes these plaques to form? In seminal work done right here in Massachusetts at the world famous Framingham Heart Study, these risk factors were identified. And the four big ones are high cholesterol, high blood pressure, smoking, and diabetes. We used to think these plaques were just passive clogs that would develop, but in research done at Brigham and Women's and elsewhere, we now understand there's actually an active component of inflammation that affects the development and evolution of these plaques. How do you know if you have coronary artery disease? Well, as the plaque builds up over time, the arteries get progressively more narrow, and that prevents the adequate amount of blood flow to the heart muscle. As it gets starved of the oxygen and nutrients it needs, then one can have symptoms. And typically, that's a squeezing or pressure-like sensation in the chest that we call angina, which is Latin for strangling. Now, in some individuals, elderly, women, patients with diabetes, they may not have the typical angina, that typical squeezing sensation in the chest. They may have atypical symptoms. Uh, it could be a different type of chest discomfort. It could be no chest discomfort. Instead, it could be shortness of breath or it could be nausea. So in those situations, especially if someone has risk factors for coronary artery disease, even if some of the symptoms seem atypical, you still wanna be vigilant and talk to your physician about the symptoms that you're having. And I wanna underscore that not all chest pain is due to coronary artery disease. In fact, probably the bulk of chest pain is due to musculoskeletal pain, meaning related to the muscles, the ligaments, the joints in the chest wall. Is coronary artery disease dangerous? The most severe manifestation of coronary artery disease is the myocardial infarction, or in other words, a heart attack. In these cases, the plaque ruptures, and that atherosclerotic gruel is now exposed to the blood flowing past it. It actually causes the blood to clot. This clot inside the coronary artery then suddenly decreases the blood flow down the vessel, starving the heart muscle of the oxygen and the nutrients that it needs, and the heart cells can then start to die. And this is a medical emergency that really warrants immediate medical attention. About a half a million Americans die each year related to coronary heart disease. What's the difference between coronary artery disease and congestive heart failure? Coronary artery disease is the buildup of atherosclerotic plaque in the coronary arteries. Congestive heart failure describes a situation where the heart can't pump the blood forward adequately for the body. Sometimes coronary artery disease can cause heart attacks, which can then lead to congestive heart failure. How common is coronary artery disease? Well, unfortunately, all too common. It affects about 20 million Americans, and it affects about one in five older Americans. How do we test for coronary artery disease? So the most common test we do is a stress test, and we can either do that just by monitoring the patient's ECG or electrocardiogram. Sometimes we add to that special imaging where we can see if there's inadequate blood flow to the heart muscle itself. Another type of test is doing a CAT scan, looking at the coronary arteries. If any of those first three tests suggest significant coronary disease, then 
will typically bring the patient to the cardiac catheterization lab where we maneuver catheters into the coronary arteries. We inject a special dye down the coronary arteries as we take a series of x-rays and really make a movie of the dye moving down the artery. And we can see if there are any blockages and define the extent and the severity of those blockages. What's the difference between coronary artery disease and a heart attack? Heart attack is a specific manifestation of coronary artery disease where there's a sudden decrease in blood flow to the heart muscle. What can I do to prevent coronary artery disease? When we talk about prevention, there are really two fundamental approaches. One is with lifestyle modification. That's gonna be diet and exercise. And the other one is through medications. By reducing the amount of fat that a person takes in, by reducing the amount of salt that they take in, by reducing the amount of sugar-sweetened beverages they take in, that then reduces the traditional risk factors in terms of high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Our research suggests that aggressive control of these risk factors starting at an early age, young adulthood, could lower the odds of developing coronary disease by close to 80%. If those risk factors aren't under good control, then that's the time you need to work with your doctor in terms of specific medicines to control the high cholesterol the high blood pressure, or the diabetes. This is a preventable disease, and so it's incumbent on all of us to really take action early to help prevent this disease from developing. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Mark Sabatine, and we are Mass General Brigham.